Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and today I want to show you my latest character of Deadeye Full Cold Spectral Throw. Now I'm using a couple of different concepts for my Spectral Throw character than I'm than what I'm currently used to for other Spectral Throws, and that is Deadeye as a whole ascendancy for Spectral Throw, and as well as that, just pure cold damage coming from Dexterity Scaling off of the Shaper mod adds two to four cold damage per 10 dexterity on a claw. So currently the, what I would say is fairly popular usage of that mod is on bows because you can get three to five on bows with a Hari's quiver. And that means you can get a lot of additional cold damage and stack your dexterity through that and make a pretty successful bow character. I personally wanted to play a spectral throw for the first time in a while. And I was pretty interested by that shaper mod on the one handers to see if I could actually scale enough cold damage with the dexterity to make it worthwhile. And the conclusion so far is that it's kind of worth it. It's not entirely better than a uh, pure Ellie. It's not entirely better than Fizz, but it certainly can be with the right amount of dexterity scaling and the right gear. So whether or not it's actually worth doing, I'm not entirely sold on, but currently it looks to be doing a pretty successful job of quite a lot of cold damage, which for the spectral throw playstyle is incredibly useful. Having lots and lots of cold damage so that you freeze things, um, chill things, shatter things, is a huge defensive b uh, boon for a build such as this one where you are extremely fast whirling around, have quite a lot of dodge and evasion, uh, some life gain on hit, and overall just a lot of damage to be able to take everything on. So the character barely ever dies and has already taken on tier 15 Elder, even at only 4,500 life meaning we've done pretty well on the uh, defense-offense balance, I think. And Deadeye as an ascendancy for Spectral Throw is the first time I've ever really looked at it, and it seems to be probably the best choice out of all of the uh, ranger ascendancies for pure speed and damage combination. Pathfinder, probably going to have more longevity throughout certain fights and a bit more quality of life. And Raider, at least in my build and the way I've tried to do it, ends up being a lot worse on, well, everything. So damage, it's got a lot less and attack speed overall when you've got Tailwind built up correctly. Uh, just doesn't have as much attack speed either. So it's got a lot less damage and attack speed, but the only thing it really could potentially have is some status immunity uh, with phasing. That's about it though. So Deadeye has a lot more to offer in the evasion category and the damage category, and I'm not really sure um, why we should make raiders anymore for spectral throw characters at this point. This is an example of the um, old microtransaction versus the new one as well, in just in case you wanted to compare the two, because I have been using Using the new microtransaction for the entirety of the character and I've been liking it well enough to uh, keep it in place of the other ones that we do currently have as well. So you can see the character clears pretty damn fast. I've been averaging something like three, four hundred million an hour all the way up to level 87 so far in various maps and with a simple swap of a slower proj you turn into an absolute beast for single target. This is probably the most uh, spectral throw single target damage I've ever had and currently my whirling blade speed is so goddamn fast it gets me in trouble because as you can see there I just whirled around the arena too fast too many times and got myself stuck in a corner because I wasn't really anticipating how fast I do this shit but the single target damage on a tier 15 guardian here is absolutely nothing to sneeze at and um, quite possibly going to be my highest single target damage character for the league, though champion uh, Blade Flurry should be higher, it's just that I never invested anywhere near as much into it. And this here is the tier 15 Elder kill I did. Uh, once we get our frenzies a little bit boosted and then the tailwind going, the damage becomes pretty absurd and he falls quicker than I've remembered on many other characters. The biggest issue for portals is the fact that slow approach kind of sucks, but overall uh, it still can clear and defensively enough thanks to your evasion, your well welling blading, and uh, the strong amount of damage with cold damage. So I'll run down the character for you guys real quick and hopefully it will take on more of the end game in the next few days. So the character currently is level uh, 87 called Spectral Throw Poggers. It's a dead eye, and we've got about 4.8 4 thousand life. Should try and hit about 5,500, which should be enough for a character that does things like uh, whirl really quickly, have fortify, and have a uh, rather substantial amount of dodge evasion 
and then life gain on hit from the claw and life gain on hit from a rupture. So overall defensively, it shouldn't be too bad. We're looking at, like I said, 51% uh, evasion here with the tailwind buff up and all of that together should be fairly nice. So the life total, won't be the biggest, but it should definitely still be defensive enough because, like I said, the character's playstyle and everything coming together makes it pretty well deathless throughout most content and uh, most mapping at the moment. So the two concepts we're dealing with are this um, two to four cold damage with attacks, uh, two attacks with this weapon per ten dexterity. So bear in mind, using two of them, you won't get twice as much. You just have. 2 to 4 on one weapon, 2 to 4 on the other weapon, which is why I'm running a shield at the moment, and also Deadeye, which, uh, as far as I can tell, for Spectral Throw, the best possible setup is just taking all of the little uh, nodes around the edges. We have Rupture, which gives us 25% chance to bleed. Since I'm not full conversion, I still have plenty of uh, physical damage. That means I will be bleeding a lot of the time, thus giving 40 crit multi, uh, 80 crit chance, and a bunch of extra life gain on hit against the target then have um, gathering winds which is tailwind and ultimately uh, with the speed that we have it should be a good 20% faster everything so attack speed run speed and uh, as well as that some good evasion there too fast and deadly which gives us uh, in total 40 proj damage 15 attack speed and uh, helps cap my accuracy since we're a dexterity based and stacking character having 770 dex, uh, you get a fair amount of accuracy off of that, and currently my character does have a nice comfortable 95% chance to hit, which is as much as you can get, and that's pretty valuable for your hit and crit chance too. And then lastly I went with powerful precision, which gives you 110 crit total because spectral throw always pierces, so it's just an additional roughly 8, 8.5 crit to the build. Uh, something like 10% damage. Now I did play a lot around with far shot and in theory that should just increase your damage. So it gives you 30% increased proj speed which shoots out your spectral throw just a little further um, but then also is supposed to give you 30% more damage um, at the absolute pinnacle of your spectral throw. Now the way that works is potentially uh, I think that it actually goes up and back and calculates based off of that. So when you're at its absolute maximum, it's probably 15% increase. Regardless of all the increases, my experience with fast shots so far has been that it feels like it sometimes decreases my damage. Maybe when I'm right next to something, um, maybe when I'm right on top of a target. Currently, Spectral Throw does have sort of a dead zone where if you whirling blades, let's say, on top of a target, right in the center of them, and you um, start Spectral Throwing, you won't deal any damage to that character. My theory is that sometimes um, the increased proj speed can increase the range of that dead zone. So if something's close enough to me, um, not directly on top of me, it means that I might deal absolutely zero damage with it. I don't know, but I have tested out far shot and I did play with it for a good like 50 levels. And overall, taking it out and just putting in point blank instead altogether made it feel a lot nicer and uh, cleared a lot better. Even trying point blank plus far shot, in theory, far shot should just help cancel out some of the negative effects of point blank. But that didn't seem to work out and I just dropped it all together and grabbed powerful precision instead. So I did go um, tailwind first, then rupture, then fast and deadly and then powerful precision and all of that together gives you quite a lot of DPS. So currently we're looking at 700,000 uh, spectral throw just um, tooltip DPS um, from the path of building and that doesn't really um, give you the full story because it's just basically one hit rather than um, the maximum amount of hits that you can get from a spectral throw which should be uh, closer to three at the apex. So 700k at this point and that is um, from the Deadeye you're getting quite a lot. Because of Rupture, Gathering Winds, Fast and Deadly and Powerful Precisions, we're getting uh, just about double our DPS. Compare that to Pathfinder, I think I was about 500k, and to um, Raider, also about 500k. I guess I should actually show you though. This is the biggest possible one we can get from Raider, and I am already ticking Frenzies, I am already using Max Frenzies. Um, and the Onslaught as well, and that's still nowhere near compared to what Deadeye does for you. So overall, Deadeye seems to be a pretty absurd amount of additional damage for a uh, Spectral Throw character. And then we don't actually tick uh, point blank in our calculation because, uh, well, we 
won't always be getting the maximum effect of point blank but if you do that you can see that just on the upswing it increases a lot of damage but i believe in theory uh, point blank shouldn't give you too much of an increase because as it goes up it'll hit uh, give you a slight increase but as it goes back it will have a decrease so in theory it shouldn't have any sort of damage increase but on the absolute apex if you're hitting just at the tip it should be an increase in damage i do believe um, under completely ideal circumstances so that's what we're doing with spectral throw that's what we're doing with dexterity stacking and dexterity stacking seems to be quite a bit harder than intelligence and strength stacking so currently I'm at 770 and I couldn't really realistically comprehend going for much higher than 800, 850 um, as opposed to a strength stacking character where I think you can hit 1500 fairly uh, comfortably and uh, intelligence where you could probably hit 13 to 1500 fairly comfortably as well. Dexterity I feel is a lot harder um, simply because you don't travel as much on the path of tree so you do keep things a lot more isolated and thus don't convert any strength into dex or int into dex. And as well as that, the gear just isn't quite um, as cool and fancy for all the percent dexterity. So we have done what we can, and the entire reason I started this character is because of this chest that I crafted. Bunch of life, bunch of life, and 11% dexterity. So it's basically a belly of the beast, or just a little bit less life than a belly of the beast, plus um, a dexterity mod. And I ended up um, six linking it after 4,000 fusings, very conveniently. Um, but before that, I was just five linking, and that was amazing, which is the first half of the video anyway. Uh, past that point, we get the six link happening, and uh, it was kind of, I thought, worth building around. So we got the dexterity mod there, and the important thing to try and craft with this thing is some attack speed and to be able to craft crit. Of course, you could also do some other things like cold damage and uh, elemental damage and penetration and rip multi as well. But uh, this is the best claw I could come up with with a good couple thousand alterations into claws because the uh, dexterity mod is somewhat rare, so it's not super easy to get, but it does end up looking like a pretty basic claw at its core. You're just mostly looking for attack speed at that point. And then we try and get dexterity just about everywhere we can with Cyclopean Coil, some dexterity there, there, quite a hefty dexterity amulet with um, some crit multi and some Ellie damage. So you can't get too carried away with just pure dexterity in um, lots of the slots because you do still want to uh, put some value into crit multi and Ellie damage and cold damage to attacks itself and uh, did manage to come across this ring which is 100% perfect for my build uh, and it cost me a good three exalts as well so something like this is completely perfect and the sky's the limit if you can hit all um, your items just like this one but at this stage dexterity is just a nice little boost of a stat uh, on top of uh, all the other stuff, the Ellie damage, the cold damage, the crit multi, um, and then if you use this claw, because if I use a 350 DPS, uh, just physical claw, I get a little less damage than I would with this one. If I use a pure elemental claw, I get a little less damage than I would with this one. So ultimately, the dexterity does come into it a bit, but it's not the most efficient stacking out there compared to like the bows, for example, which get a lot more damage per dexterity. But it's not a completely um, lost cause. I'd say it has been worth doing. More or less, though, I'd say this is just a nice proof of concept for some um, spectral throw on a dead eye. It doesn't have to be a uh, pure dexterity stacking. Can certainly just be elemental. Can be um, just pure physical. Can be fizz to elemental conversion. I think there's some good potential for dead eye in this uh, category, though. And besides that, I've also got the helm enchant, which should help you on the deceleration. So it should, you know, sit at its apex just a little longer, thus giving you an increase in single target damage. And um, of course, got some tomb fists, which just shit all over every other glove, especially with the two abyssal sockets um, kept in mind. So cold damage to attacks, cold damage to claws, uh, still pretty huge for us. As you can see, 66k tooltip, just one of these um, is 5k. That's, you know, almost 10% of my damage. And uh, then factor in intimidate. You really can't compete with two socket tomb fists. Now, the links I'm running currently uh, just to map with are spectral throw, Ellie damage with attacks, um, added cold, hypothermia and then GMP then my uh, next link was cold penetration and we sub in slower proj over GMP for single target events now I do think everything um, can be cleared with this build on a five link fairly comfortably I'd say but the sixth link is going to be a nice chunky 30 to 40 percent additional damage 
So why not go for it as well? And on top of that, of course, we have our Diamond, our Silver, our Wise Oak, and our Series Promise. Now, the best thing is definitely Tailwind. You end up stacking some serious attack speed, and I have invested into um, Frenzies throughout the tree as well. Get Frenzies here, here, and here. So I still have six Frenzies, and uh, with Blood Rage as well, and then Frenzy on the single target, I can keep those up very easily. So it's a lot faster than Raider in that sense, um, even though Raider is supposed to be the king of fast. This is actually still faster thanks to Tailwind and all the attack speed you get through the um, little nodes over here, for example. And then lastly, I want to mention Cold Steel. Uh, we do make use of one funky jewel, and that is increases and reductions to physical damage in radius are transformed to apply to cold damage. So with the use over here, we then get these nodes as pure cold, which is pretty damn um, useful. And these nodes over here, this gets cold, this gets cold, these get cold, uh, these get skipped, this one gets cold, this one gets cold, and you can spec into those as well if need be. Now uh, for bow builds, it also should pay off to actually put it here. If you're um, doing some um, cold to dexterity bow stuff or just pure conversion should actually pay off to put it here if you really want you can get um, things like this this entire little area here and a lot of the bow ones over here so it could very well potentially pay off to use your cold steel for a bow character and uh, of course you can put it over here for various other things too but it wasn't in my mind worth it for uh, this character to have a cold steel down here that's probably all I really need to say about this um, pretty funky character for myself. Uh, it was fairly costly to try and, you know, put everything together just right. So in that context, I'm not sure it's purely worth it for dexterity stacking with a claw, but uh, for bow characters, definitely works and Deadeye should be pretty good for that. It's probably one of the better ones you can make for a bow character right now to stack uh, cold damage and then dexterity but that's um, not quite what I did with my first bow character. Kind of regret it at this point. Should have been fun and worth doing. But uh, claws with dexterity, cold damage, it's not the worst. I wouldn't say it's the best, but so far it has come together to make a pretty nice spectral throw build, and I'll see what it can do in the next few days with um, tier 16s and maybe even Uber Elder because life shouldn't matter too much, and I think I'm fast enough with a decent enough playstyle on this character to probably take down Uber Elder We'll give it a shot and see how it goes. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and the character and the entire explanation, guys. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.